Hello ladies and gentlemen and everyone else. Welcome to a Saturday afternoon episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host, Ted. Welcome to the Premier Alcohol Review Show here on YouTube. It is just about to turn, well it just has turned half past three on the 30th of September 2023. I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not, I hope things improve very soon. Now, my brother was travelling recently and he brought me back a very familiar site, which is a beer from our old friends at the Estonian brewery. Pojala. Now, in the past, I've reviewed a couple of Pojala's drinks, but I've never reviewed any of their really dark and heavy stuff. And this one, I feel, could be interesting because it's been a while since I've reviewed a really good porter. And this is Pojala's Imperial Baltic Porter. An Imperial Baltic Porter, as dark as the Estonian winter nights, says to serve between 10 to 14 degrees Celsius. I've got to say thank you to my brother because he's the one who provided this drink. So again, very much thank you. It's a very, very much appreciated gift. And it says here on their website, it's got a taste of a rich body that comes through at first with an initially espresso-like acidity, balanced by some sweetness of caramelized toffee. And then it says, as your glass warms up, you should expect to taste red currant mixed with a dark chocolate washed down with a slight alcoholic warmth. It's got an appearance of pitch black and with an opaque brown head. It's got a nose where a clean burnt sugar dominates, immediately giving way to rich dark fruits, plum, raisin, fresh cranberries particularly, and then eventually a roasted smokiness emerges like a distant bonfire on the horizon. And then malts it's got is Pilsner Zero Munich Carafa 2 Special, a uh, special B chocolate malt, which I'm kind of to be expected in a porter like this. Crystal 300 and Demara Sugar. It's got hops of Magnum and Northern Brewer. And then, yeah, it says here to serve between 10 to 14 degrees Celsius. Yeah, and what I quite like as well that I didn't actually notice before is on Pojala's website, uh, they actually have a breakdown of not only just the extent to which there are different uh, ingredients in it, but like the percentage of those malts and hops uh, that are in the beer, as well as like the actual cooking and sort of like brewing process that they do to make their beers. So that's really interesting, actually. I wish more breweries did that. But uh, yeah, give the Pojala's website a look. Um, but I must say, the bottle, I think I'm going to give it probably... Um, I'm probably going to say it like a, a 9 out of 10. I wish there was like... I don't know. Actually, no, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It's just the pure simplicity of it is really nice. Like... You just get the impression that this is just very simple and it just represents like the like the darkest and blackest of nights of like northern and northeastern Europe, which is kind of how it is in Estonia during the night. Uh, it is It does get pretty dark up there uh, at night time. But uh, yeah, very simple bottle design, very simple label design. Contrast of white and black and uh, midnight grey is really interesting. So yeah, give it a good solid 10 out of 10. That's a really handsome looking bottle. But uh, anyway, as always, we won't really know what this sucker uh, really is like until we taste it. But before we do, we obviously need to give this a quick snifter. So we'll sniff it in the bottle first, and then we'll pour it out into the old Arbroath FC glass. So let's have a quick sniff. Hang on, what do they say the nose was like? Because that is a nice nose, to be fair. Okay, so they said there was burnt sugar. That gives away to dark fruits. There is a little bit of a dark, sort of like burnt sugar smell at the beginning, but it's a little bit overpowered by the dark, uh, the dark fruits. I like the dark fruit smell, but it's a little bit imbalanced. Um, and then yeah, you do get that smoky, uh, smokiness at the end there, that, like they said on the website. So yeah, it's a very simple, very nice flavour. Like a little bit caramelly at the beginning, sort of like kind of like plummy fruit, uh, forest fruitiness in the middle, and then like at the end there's a little bit. Um, like woody oakiness to it. It's, it does smell really nice. I'd, I'd say it's a little bit um, sort of imbalanced in terms of which smells overpower with which other ones, but um, generally the nose is all right. So I'll give it an eight out of 10 at least for the nose. But uh, what I'll do first is I will pour it into this glass to uh, give it a proper sniff in a, in a glass as it should be warranted. Anyway. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to sort of digest the nose when you pour it into a glass. There's a little bit of a cocoiness to it as well. Uh, I think I generally say the nose in the glass is like a nine out of ten. It feels a lot more balanced. Nothing overpowers each other particularly. Um, the burnt sugar is still a bit subdued. I'd like it to be a bit more present in the nose, but generally it smells nice. Um, I was also going to say as well, if you do try this out, do watch yourself because it is a ten point five percenter. So it's pretty strong for a beer. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that is kind of to be expected with porters, but 
yeah, definitely watch yourself and have some water beforehand. But as always, have ourselves a quick palate cleanser. And then on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. And once again, to my dear brother, thank you very much. This is a lovely gift. Anyway, bottoms up. God, that is a striking initial taste. Very simple, actually. It's really smooth for a porter, actually. A lot of porters I do find tend to be either too watery or too creamy. It's just right in the middle in terms of its texture, at least. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit burnt sugar at the beginning. Gives way to this kind of sort of like tangy, sort of like roasted coffee flavour in the middle. Which is kind of like the main through line of the flavour, I would say. But it's kind of like undercut by, like I said, that little bit of sort of sugariness and that sort of slight caramelly sweetness. Um, not really getting too much of the fruity red currant flavour they mentioned. No, no, actually no, there is a tiny bit of it, it's just very subdued and it kind of is more so they're not really add an extra depth to the flavour but more so to kind of offset the coffeeness a little bit just so it's not too overpowering. Um, and then yeah there's definitely a little bit of dark cocoa at the end that kind of just sort of like ties together with really nicely with that coffee flavour so all the flavours are it's weird because like in the nose I felt like the smells and flavours there were a little bit imbalanced that maybe held the nose back a little bit not a lot but just a little bit but in the actual taste of the drink the flavours are a little bit imbalanced but it feels more like a design sort of choice really because it feels like the sugar and the um, the chocolate flavours are there more so to just sort of counterbalance everything just a very slight amount just so you get this main through line of coffee but it's not too overpowering on its own um, so to be honest with you the fact that the flavours are a little bit imbalanced actually kind of works in this drink's flavour I would say um, uh, yeah you get this main through line of coffee with like while you're eating like some maybe fruits alongside it uh, after having put a bit of sugar in the coffee first and then you have a bit of dark chocolate afterwards that's the impression I get like that's the mixture of flavours I'm feeling here um, yeah, it's really simple, but like, and even though the flavours are quite starkly contrasting against each other, they're, you know, and they, they are a little bit imbalanced, it kind of, like I said, it feels like it's imbalanced by design, like, it f doesn't feel like they're clashing together at all, really, or that one's overpowering the other, it just feels like they're there to the right amount. It's like when you, um, it's like when you make a meal, and uh, let's say, like, you make a big pot of spaghetti bolognese. Obviously, two of the main ingredients, in terms of herbs at least, that you put in there are bay leaves and thyme. You do want to put in a, a decent amount of bay leaves and thyme in there, but you don't want to put in too much that it overpowers the other flavours in the bolognese. So you just want to put it, it's enough in there so that it kind of complements the other flavours. And that's kind of what I feel like they've done here. It's really, really well balanced for a porter, actually, because I feel like a lot of imported or uh, craft porters that I've tried in the past this isn't by nature but at least just in terms of the ones I've tried have generally been sort of like a little bit imbalanced in terms of their flavours I think one there's a few exceptions obviously there's like the old um, peanut butter uh, um, stout by tailgate brewery that was really really nice um, but this is really good yeah this is definitely up there in terms of the porters I've had in the past this is really well balanced um, what well, not really well balanced, but it's like really well flavoured at least. Mm. Yeah, the flavours all complement each other really well. The uh, texture is like a little bit smooth and sort of syrupy, but it's not too heavy, or, but also like not being too light. Yeah, generally this is really lovely stuff. I really like this. This definitely up there is one of the best porters I've ever had. I'd probably give it a um, nine out of ten. The only reason I'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10 is just purely because there's a tiny bit of harshness at the aftertaste um, that I don't personally mind too much, but it kind of just sort of like limit the um, sweet, sweeter parts of the flavour a little bit. I wish they could stand out a little bit more in contrast against the bitterness of the coffee flavour a little bit more. But generally speaking, it doesn't hold it back too much in my opinion. It's just a minor personal gripe really, more than anything. However, I do imagine just purely because of how strong this is and because of how... Um, 
sort of a heavy, like in terms of flavour at least, that the aftertaste it can, might be to some people. I might not imagine that everyone will like this, but I would still say if you're looking for trying out a strong porter, then definitely give this a shot because the flavour is generally pretty simple and easy to get to grips with. Um, and I would, yeah, generally recommend it. It is nice. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, definitely have it either very, very minutely chilled or about room temperature, I think. So I think that's probably the best way to have it. And um, yeah, really good stuff. I'd say if you're going to accompany this with anything, actually, in terms of food or anything like that, you know what? You know what would go really well with this, actually? It's a nice bit of coffee cake. I really think this would go really nice with a good bit of coffee cake with some whipped coffee cream on top. That would be really nice. But yeah, give this a shot if you guys want to. I think this is a lovely stuff. Solid 9 out of 10. Would definitely, definitely buy again. And definitely would recommend. Again, thank you to my brother. Solid stuff. But uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Booster, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out anything else I do online, uh, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. But until next time, have fun, stay safe for whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booster. Bye-bye for now. And if you, um,